Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Coach Matt, EliteThrowsCoaching.com, coming to you today to talk about a super common problem that happens with newer, beginner, rotational shot putters and discus throwers, and that is sector fall. So right-handed thrower going down the right sector, left-handed thrower down the left sector. What causes them? What are the issues with them? How can you correct them? Ways that you notice they are happening coaches, ways that you can track it backwards. All of that is going to be explained in this video. But before we get started, as always, I just want to remind you, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to the channel, click the subscribe button down below, and also make sure to click that notification bell that pops up along with it. That way you get notified of any new video that comes out on this channel. We're doing videos like this every week. There are question and answer videos by email that I do as well. Uh, there are also video analysis uh, videos that go up on the channel randomly from time to time. All good stuff, all free to help you out. So make sure to stay in the loop, click that subscribe button, click that notification bell. That way you get notified. Makes sense, right? So let's do this. Let's take you out in the circle. We're going to start talking to you more about sector files, what causes sector files, and ways that you can prevent them from happening. Okay, so everybody at some point in their career as a thrower has had sector file issues. So sector files most commonly are caused because you have an improper or a bad alignment with your feet in the power position. So if you think back to years ago on this channel when we were talking about power position and how to get your feet set up, the way that I like to start my athletes nowadays, especially if I'm at a camp and I'm doing a big group of athletes at once, is I like to start them with their feet together facing down that throwing sector. So it looks like this. Right in the middle of the toe board, feet together, looking straight down the throwing sector. From there, what I'll do is I'll have them take a step straight back with their power leg. So if you're right-handed, it's your right leg. Left-handed, it's your left leg. But we're gonna have them actually take a step straight back, pretending like they're on a balance beam. Take a step straight back, okay? Make sure everything is balanced. Whoop. Make sure everything is balanced. Okay, so both feet are straight. They're looking straight ahead. Everything is balanced. From there, we have them pivot. Rotate back by pivoting on their toes. So it looks like this. We go from balance, boom. Rotate on the toes. And if you look down, what you can see, you can see it really well with the contrast between my black shoes and socks and my ridiculously white legs. It hasn't really been too sunny out up here in Rhode Island. We're getting a lot of rain. That's my excuse for not having absolutely zero color to my skin right now. But if you notice, my feet are lined up in sort of a instep toe position. So the instep of my right foot, my power foot as a right-handed thrower, is lined up with the toe of my left foot, the toe of my blocking foot. And what this does is this allows you that when you throw, you're able to turn your feet and turn your hips, turn your body, all the way down the throwing area. So you can be here throwing this way and actually be lined up. All right, so that's all well and good, but what does that have to do with right sector falls for right-handed throwers, left sector falls for left-handed throwers? What does foot alignment have to do with that? Well, if your feet are not aligned in that proper position, you are not gonna be able to get your hips all the way down the middle. And where the hips are pointing in the throw is where the shot or where the discus is going to go. So if your hips are pointing down the right sector line, that's where the shot and the discus is going to go, down the right sector line. Well, if I set up on that balance beam on that right sector line and then I pivot back like I did before, now I have improper alignment. So if I don't have that good heel-toe relationship, if I have sort of an even relationship where both feet now are even toe-toe instead of heel-toe or instep-toe, and I go to throw and turn my feet and point down the middle, the farthest I'm going to be able to get while keeping my balance 
is right sector. And more than likely, that's gonna to lead to a right sector follow. Now here's the thing that you have to con consider. When you're doing a full discus throw, when you're doing a full rotational shot put throw, where does the power position occur? Okay, it's not in the very back of the circle. If we're in the very back of the circle here, we're at the start of the throw. Okay, it's not in the middle of the throw as we're driving across that circle. It's not the mirror turn position. The power position is at the very end of the throw. It's literally what starts that sign of standing throw, power throw position is when this left foot touches down and when the left foot touches down in the proper spot. Okay, so this is where it all begins. This is where you start to actually, you know, go through that throwing motion, if you want to call it that, of the throw. You're done turning out of the back, you're done driving across the circle, the mirror turns over, now we're in the power position. It's at the very end of the throw. So literally, everything that can happen before that position, any mistake that happens is going to sometimes cause the feet to not be aligned correctly. You need to be able to look back on the throw. You need to be able to watch a video, watch it in slow motion, whatever you need to do. You need to be able to find out what in the beginning of the throw caused the feet to be misaligned near the end of the throw. All right, so if the number one cause of sector fouls is a bad heel-toe alignment in the power position, we need to then ask ourselves, what is actually causing that bad heel-toe alignment to occur or in-step-toe alignment to occur? So say, for example, you've taught your kids since day one, you have to be in that heel-toe relationship. They know they've got to be in that heel-toe relationship. So they do it in their standing throws. Then when you get them into things like mirror turns, South Africans, and your full throws out of the back, all of a sudden, we no longer have that good heel-toe relationship. If they know it needs to be there, and it's not happening naturally in their throw, something before that point caused that to happen. The number one cause of the bad heel-toe alignment that I have seen with all of my throwers at some point is that they over-rotate coming out of the back of the circle. Now we've already done a previous video, I'll put the link right above, about over-rotation and what causes over-rotation. But over-rotation, if that happens, the athlete turns out of the back and they're over-rotating into the side of the circle. They're not driving down the middle of the circle, they over-rotate. So at this point, when they go to actually get into their power position, their feet are out of alignment. Now there are many causes of over-rotation. We already did that video a few weeks ago, but you can see the issue here. The athlete has that compass in their head. They understand where the throwing sector is. They know that left foot needs to be somewhere in the front of the rim somewhere in the front of the toe board, somewhere in that middle position, in the pizza slice, so to speak, that sector near the toe board. Well, if they over-rotate and they're here, then they're gonna put their foot down, and what's left? They're gonna try to turn, boom, hips are pointing down the right sector, they're not gonna get anywhere. Or, the other common thing that happens, a little bit of a side note to this video, the other common thing that happens, is they realize they can't get their hips all the way around. They realize they're going to trip themselves. They realize they're going to fall on their face. So instead, what do they do? They jump and they twist in the air. And end up doing that kind of weird looking, jumping, scooping throw that we see with a lot of our throwers. Now, if your athlete is not over-rotating, meaning that their power foot is landing exactly where it needs to be, then you need to look at one other kind of common, not as common as over-rotating, but another common reason why they're in that bad heel-toe alignment, and that's because the left foot is coming out of the back of the circle too late. So we see this a lot with athletes that don't get into a good zero support position. 
They're trying to take that big step across the circle. And they realize that at some point, they've got to be here when they throw. Well, what happens if the left foot comes out of the back of the circle too late? If they're not driving across that circle, if they're trying to take a really big step across that circle, that left foot now has to travel from the back of the circle to the front of the circle, basically as soon as the right foot touches down in the middle. So it looks like this, they turn out of the back, they take the step, and then they barely get the left foot off the ground. It looks like this, where it's just this little kind of step. Okay, there's no drive, it's just a step. By the time they get here, they know it's time to throw. But where's the left foot? The left foot hasn't had time to get to the front of the circle yet. The left foot's still around here someplace. And what do they do? They put it down quick, and now they have a bad alignment. So sometimes, getting out of the back of the circle late is gonna mean that their left foot is getting to the front of the circle late. And athletes who have been throwing for a while that know, hey, I'm here, it's time to throw, if their left foot is not in position yet, they're gonna put the left foot down quickly, and then boom, they're out of alignment, and they're going right sector. All right, now say all that's looking great. They're not over-rotating out of the back of the circle, and they actually have a good zero support, and they're getting out of the back of the circle on time. They're not taking the big step, they're actually driving across that circle, but they still have a bad heel-toe alignment in the power position. What are some things that you can do to help to kind of correct that position? If it's not the back of the circle that's causing it, then it's something happening in the middle. So what are some things that you can do if the problem's not the back, but it's happening somewhere in zero support and it's happening somewhere in that mirror turn position? Well, the number one thing you can do are mirror turns in the circle. There's a reason this circle looks a little bit different than the circle at your school. The reason for that is because number one, we've painted the line from three o'clock to nine o'clock to divide the front half and the back half. That's for our gliders to make sure they're gliding far enough across the circle. The other thing, hopefully you have something like this at your school, but we have the sector lines that are painted right to that middle. So everything intersects at the middle. And this is what I call the pizza slice. So you've got the pizza slice right in the front of the circle. This needs to be your target on mirror turns. Okay, so mirror turns, it's sometimes tough to see. If you are just on a bare piece of cement, like a sidewalk or a parking lot, and you don't have the lines painted, your athletes sometimes don't understand where they should be putting their feet. So with mirror turns, if I do have an athlete that's having trouble over-rotating, you can see how worn down the middle of the circle is right here. We'll have them actually start in that standing throw position, in that power position, shot, discus, does not matter. Then we're gonna have the mirror turn to here. Now they have that focal point. Now they know I've got to get my foot back to this position. So we have them rotate back. Boom. Now I can see there's the sector line painted all the way down to whatever it might be. Two, 200 feet in the distance. 70 feet in the shot. You can see that sector line. So now you know that is your target. That's your balance beam. We want this foot inside the sector line in that pizza slice. We're here. Boom. We're inside the pizza slice. We're going to pivot right back out. Half turn, mirror turn, wheel drill, whatever you guys call it back in your place. But we're looking for that target inside the pizza slice, inside that left sector line. Okay, now what if those look good? So Power position, mirror turn, looking pretty good. Back in the circle, looking pretty good. Where could the error be happening? Well, maybe it's in their South African when they're driving out of the back of the circle. If it's not the very back, if it's not the very front, and if it's not the middle, it's kind of that zero support phase where things are getting a little screwy. 
So something you can do, we've shown you in previous videos a stop glide, where you glide out of the bank and you stop in the power position. You can do the same thing with your South Africans. You can do the same thing with your full throws or your full turns as well, and sort of do a stop South African or a stop full rotation. Come out of the back, boom, we're getting ready to drive across that circle. We drive and then we stop. And then we check. Okay, pretty good alignment. Do the same thing in discus. We're here, turn out of the back, boom, we're driving, boom. Okay, let me look down. That's pretty good, a little bit too wide, but pretty good. Then you can do that with your fulls. You can stop in the power position. Shot, we're here, we're coming around, boom. Okay, pretty good, pretty ugly, but pretty good. Discus, we're coming around here, boom. Okay, pretty good, I'm in the pizza slice, but you can stop when you get to that power position. Have the athlete look down at their feet, and then see what needs to be worked on. All right, this video has gone on long enough. Thank you guys so much for sticking around, checking it out, watching it, learning more. I really appreciate it. Guys, just like I said before, click that subscribe button down below. Uh, click the notification bell along with it so you are notified of all of our videos when they come out. Also, make sure to leave a comment or a question down below, and I will try to get to it in a future video. Finally, there's going to be some stuff popping up here on screen, links to other videos, links to buy Nelco products, and the link to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to click on those as well. Check those out. See what else we have to offer.